uh, chemo informatics so uh, use of analytical tools in the analysis of trace elements using uh, qualitative and spectroscopic techniques he has several publications based on optical and electrical properties of new perylene diamide thine films so he has uh, the other one on studies on drug polymer interaction and it goes on he has a huge profile uh, uh, with courses being uh, he has been, he has taught uh, organic chemistry in organic and structural chemistry uh, spectro uh, spectroscopy solid state chemistry science and technology for affairs in open university graduates general science and research methodology uh, he has done several community service and outreach programs he has been the advisor for science fairs project advisor for environment protect, um, protection related pro projects here we are we shall begin with the first candidate for the day jps a 014 Sahid M from Imam Shafi Matriculation Higher Secondary School on the topic Sound Source with Electromagnetic Induction. Master Sahid. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Am I audible? Yes. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am Sahid from Imam Shafi Rahmat Matriculation Higher Secondary School. I am studying in class 9. I studied that electromagnetic waves can produce light waves. I thought that why can't you use it for sound waves? For my project, sound source with electromagnetic induction, first I have taken a magnet to show that it can freely transfer a coil of wire like a drill machine. Next, a magnet is driven sinusoidal in a coil of wire placed on a speaker. Electromagnetic induction varies with and the frequency of the sound wave changes what? Hypothesis: Variation of frequency from sound source can be used to measure variance in electromagnetic induction due to variance in frequency of vibration of the coil. Design of study: For my project, sound source with electromagnetic induction dependent variable is induced current. Independent variable is a meter. Under controlled variable is sound source. Materials required for this project: copper, copper coil, bar magnet, sound source speaker, connecting wires, and a meter. Procedure: Before connecting sound source, I took a bar magnet, a meter, and a copper coil of wire having a large number of turns. I inserted the bar magnet into the copper coil of wire and observed the changes in a meter. I collected all the induced current value by a meter. After connecting sound source, I took the same bar magnet, copper coil of wire, and ammeter. I connected one end of the coil to the ammeter and another end of the coil to the bar. I another end of the coil to the speaker. I repeated the same process with different type of frequencies. In, in my first trial, induced current value was zero point two. The resistance was four ohms. In my second trial, induced current value was zero point four milliampere. Resistance was eight ohms. In my third trial, induced current value was 0.6 milliampere. Resistance was 8 ohms. Variation of frequency from sound source can be used to measure variance in electromagnetic induction due to the variance of frequency of vibration of the coil. Result: In this experiment, we found that the increased EMF gives variation of frequency of vibration of the coil. In this experiment, we found that the increased EMF gives variation of frequency in sound source. Application. This increased EMF can be used to send in alert message to the law of enforcement agencies. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah. Congratulations. I have few questions for you. Uh, what do you mean by ammeter? Voltage. It is used to measure voltage. Ammeter. Actually, it is an instrument used to measure uh, current. Uh, in yes. your project, you mentioned a meter as your uh, dependent variable, right? Yes. Uh, it should not be your dependent variable because using a meter, yes. you, you will measure the current, right? Uh, so, 
in both your uh, Ma'am, uh, your I, I, uh, I told you this independent value yeah fine uh, whatever it is uh, it should not ammeter uh, should not be your uh, variable here okay. because using ammeter you used to measure uh, current right yes okay then in your hypothesis you mentioned the variation of frequency from some source can be used to measure the variation in electromagnetic induction uh, here uh, you denoted frequency right yes, uh, uh, did you measure frequency in your project yes ma'am uh, in your data table uh, i couldn't found uh, i couldn't find any uh, frequency measurement yes ma'am Uh, you did not told uh, your, uh, resistance in your project. Uh, what role does the resistance play in your project? I can. Ma'am, I can. Can you repeat the question? Ah, uh, in your data table, ah, uh, you had one column, right? A uh, resistance. Yes. Ma'am. How did you measure resistance in your project? Uh, uh, by using speaker. By using speaker. Mm. Uh, what does mean by resistance, ma? Yeah. Okay, ma. Fine. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Oh. Rafi sir, would you like to question? I'm sorry. No, ma'am. Thank you. You would move on to the next candidate. JPSA 081 Nusrat Fatima from MS Creative High School, Muradnagar on the topic storage of food versus acid content. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, everyone. A very warm welcome to National Science Fair 2022. I'm Mr. Fatima from Grade 9 of MS Creative School, Muradnagar branch, present in front of you all to speak on storage effects as a content of food. Do you know what? I have always seen my grandparents so active, energetic. I may get tired, but they're so healthy. Do you know the reason? Actually, they used to consume fresh fruits. They did not preserve them. So they had high levels of immunity. But nowadays, what we are doing is we are bringing the fruits and we are storing them. So here, a question arised in my mind. Does storage affect acid content of food? Here, I got to test ascorbic acid level before and after preservation. So I approached my teacher for the experiment and she helped me out with it. Fruits are very rich in vitamins, nutrients, minerals and very essential for our health. We generally prepare food according to our taste instead of seeing the nutrients and health promoting compound in them. So vitamin C. I here can be also said as ascorbic acid. I'm testing that before and after preservation. So the way I did is, and the materials I needed were starch, distilled water, ideal solution, buric starch, conical flask, beaker, and titration things. And the way I did is, first I made starch solution. To do this, first you need to take 0 0.50 gram of starch and add it to 50 ml of boiling water. And make sure that you allow it to cool before using. Then I made vitamin C standard solution. In this, take 0 0.250 gram of vitamin C tablet I took Limsi, you can take any other tablet as well and dissolve in 100 ml of water. Then dilute again into 250 ml of water and then name the flask as vitamin C standard solution. Then I did the standardizing solution. In this, take, zero, uh, take 25 ml of vitamin C solution, which you made just now, and add 10 drops of starch in it. Then rinse your burette with iodine solution and fill it and record the initial one. Now, what is burette? It is nothing but a long glass tube which has markings on it and tap at the end. And do the now do the titration. Titration till you reach the end point. What is end point? The solution which is down in the conical flask will turn into blue black color. Now when you stop the titration, record the final volume you get in iodine solution. And to know how much volume required, of course you need to do initial volume minus final volume. And make sure you do it twice or thrice. Then take out the average. And uh, when I took out the average, I got us the iodine solution needed was seven ml. Now take this, uh, keep it in mind. Now do the now I did the titrating of juice sample. In this, we need to take 25 ml of juice sample instead of taking vitamin C standard solution. Again, add the 10 drops of starch, then initial volume, then titration, and the same method. 
do it twice and then find the calculations. After doing the calculations over here, I got the result as in fresh guava, the vitamin C was 0 0.028 and in the storage, it was 0 0.017, which shows decrease in vitamin C. Here in the graph also, it shows the decrease in vitamin C. Whereas in, uh, when it comes to, I even did it with the pomegranate and in pomegranate, it was 0 0.01 gram by 100 gram is fresh one. Whereas in stored one, it was 0 0.007, which shows again decrease in vitamin C. So here, the it, I can conclude by saying that the vitamin C decreases when the storage of time increases. So we should not store because the our immunity level decreases and that's not helpful for us. Vitamin C is very necessary for our body. It is very essential. Even vitamin C, uh, if there is no vitamin C, you can have a disease called scurvy. So I can conclude by saying that if you store vitamin, uh, if you store the fruits, the vitamin C level will keep on decreasing and it's not good for your health. So eat fresh, be fresh. Thank you. Uh, dear, how many samples did you take for your project? Ma'am, I took guava and pomegranate and I did it with these. Oh, my name, uh, how many guava did you take? How many? How many fruit, individual fruit, guava? How many guava did you take for your project? Guava. Oh, I, uh, only one guava. Oh, and and uh, first, I Okay. To make your uh, fair, science research fair, such a fair test, you should have take uh, many samples, right? Yeah, first, I, uh, because I uh, feel that pomegranate and guava has more vitamin C, so I thought to do it with these both first. Okay. Um, I'd like to ask a few questions to the student. Uh, the first question is, um, you have, you have uh, determined uh, the concentration of uh, vitamin C in each sample, right? So how did you calculate that? The calculation, first we need to find the average of the uh, iodine solution. Like first you need to do total volume by number of trials. Like I did it for three trials, so I'll do by three. Then the uh, product you get, right? Then the answer you get should be multiplied by 0 0.25 because we are taking 25 ml of juice. Then we have to divide it by seven and then we'll get the uh, amount of white. No, I just need a formula, a basic formula that you might have studied. Uh, only with using that formula, you might have calculated the normality of the vitamin C. After finding out the normality of the vitamin C, can calculate the amount of the vitamin C. So can you give me the formula? First, I took the average. Then I took the, uh, the standard amount was uh, 0.25. So I multiplied by uh, the average. Number. Right, 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 right. Okay, okay. The thing is, uh, what you have done is, is called as law of volumetric analysis. V1, N1 equal to V2, and a very standard, uh, a basic formula. Okay. okay, only because of that, you, have, you might have used a standard solution. Hmm. Okay, so, okay, tell me, uh, why does uh, the end point, uh, the color changes to dark blue? Because starch is, uh, when the vitamin C oxidizes, the iodine solution reacts with the starch, and then the color changes to the blue-black. Uh, uh, tell me once again. When uh, the more number of days you store, the more vitamin C starts oxidizing. And when the uh, ox uh, vitamin C oxidizes, the mm. iodine solution reacts with the starch and it, uh, it turns to blue black color. Okay, right. So iodine or iodide, which gets into the starch? I would, uh, try iodide gets with iodine and then it makes up. No, simple, uh, simple. I2 or I minus, iodine or I minus, which gets trapped inside the starch and you get a blue color. I too. <coughs> oh, oh. Please tell me it again. Iodine. I, iodine. Okay. 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 And uh, when we saw your research paper, uh, I, we could not see any result. The table column was empty. Yesterday, I just went through your research paper that you have submitted. Um, the table column was empty. No, sir. Here, I just see the data analysis. 
first in the reading of standard solution here is the reading of pomegranate stone and here is the reading of guava stone no that is storage and temperature and time i wanted was you should have a tabular column of doing the analysis okay only then uh, because i just saw the ppt that was shown here in the display i mm. didn't saw any result in your tabular column Ashan. okay ma'am thank okay. you your time all the best uh, one more question shall i ask one question sure sir uh, actually what is the normality of the iod normal what is the normality of the iod in which you use normal t normality normality normality, normality, normality of the iod uh, what is the what is the normality of the iod in which you Uh, did you find the normality of iodine which you used? So actually, the uh, we went in science academy. So there, the iodine solution was already present. Okay, iodine uh, is given. Uh, you you procured iodine. Uh, unless you know the normality of iodine, you cannot estimate the vitamin C. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, you you haven't uh, without that uh, it is not possible. Uh, okay, fine. Uh, okay, sir, fine. We can proceed. Thank you, Miss Nisrat. Next we have J P S A zero eight nine Shivam Banerji from Sister Nivedita Amir Pet on the topic waterproof spray to increase visibility. Excuse me, ma'am. Can you hear me? Excuse me. Yes, yes, we can. Okay. Greetings to one and all present here. I am Shivam Banerjee from Sister Nivedita School, and today I am going to present my project, environmentally waterproof spray. So the problem I am dealing with here is during rainfall, which is apparently the most dangerous time of the year. Many take their helmets off due to rainwater blocking their sight. The situation of people needing spectacles is no better due to the raindrops and the occasional fog. And the waterproof solutions do help, but it harms something greater: the environment. Are commercially our commercial waterproof sprays really helping us? Is it possible to make a solution, a solution that solves all these problems and stays environmentally friendly? my hypothesis is that if a spray with the properties of existing sprays but environmentally friendly is implemented then in the real world then it would allow people to keep on their daily routine and have one less thing to worry about and my project does exactly that the procedure is first i found out that environmentally friendly waterproof uh, sprays do not exist at all and the commercially waterproof sprays have CFCs in them, chlorofluorocarbons, which destroys the environment. And the eco-friendly alternative is made by mixing rubbing alcohol, glycerin, and water in the respective proportions, one is to two is to one. Which honestly, I arrived by trial and error, and let it rest and cool down in room temperature. The solution is derived from the given data below, and the maximum amount required to make the solution is hundred rupees. And the amount that comes out from is is 80 ml by the data and analysis and testing these are the main candidates used for the testing the main candidates are oil glycerin rubbing alcohol and water as a combining agent and to spread the liquid better this is the data that i got from rigorous and to get uh, accurate results so here actually two liquids were tied in score which were the combination of uh, alcohol glycerin and water and alcohol glycerin and oil but by side by side comparison alcohol glycerin and water one by the given data below we can see the number of accidents that occurred in india in one year fatal accidents and this uh, and this chart gives us information from 2000 the year 2000 to 2015 which it peaked at 2015 and is still growing this pie chart is the proportions of uh, the accidents that happened in each season the darkest part is during the rainy season which is 57.7% uh, 
the lighter part is summer season okay. 30.2% and the last one is the winter season which is 12.1%. The result that I arrived to from these experimentations and I had data analysis is the combination of uh, alcohol glycerin and water as I said and the conclusion that I have come to is that from the analysis of the commercially waterproof sprays the presence of environmentally harmful CFCs have drawn attention in various countries to explore for eco-friendly alternatives. My project aims to find such an eco-friendly alternative towards a greener earth. Thank you. Rajas, would you like to question the student? Uh, I just want to know uh, from the student, uh, you said waterproof spray, environmentally friendly. How it is environmentally friendly? Because because this uh, because this spray is not made up of CFC. CFC is not involved at all. And basically when it is applied, it is a really small amount. Like I tested it on a glass pane which is equal to 7.5 centimeter into 2.5 centimeter and it required about 0.02 ml of the liquid to cover the whole area and waterproof it for two months okay what is the composition of your um, spray it is glycerin rubbing alcohol and water in the proportions of one is to two is to one okay and this uh, proportion i arrived by trial and error you said you added some amount of CFC. No, I did not. I, no, okay. this is completely uh, this is completely harmless. Does not uh, involve any CFCs and is also extremely cheap. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, uh, one more question. Yes, sir. Uh, one more question. In the data analysis, you have given. Uh, uh, that is a uh, liquid as well as uh, uh, A, B, C, D up to H, you have given. Uh, what is that you can explain? Uh, what sure, sir. This data? sure, sir. So the A, B, C, D are basically columns, sir. And these are the liquids that I use. Like this is liquid and liquid combinations. Like the first one is glycerin as given in the key. Second one is oil. Next is the combination of oil, glycerin and water. Next to oil, okay, glycerin, okay. and uh, uh, what is those parameters you measured? Yes, sir. Transparency. So transparency. Transparency. This is like after we apply, is the like screen as uh, is equal to the liquid not present or not? Like this is the overall liquid the, which I arrived to. This is the uh, glycerin or uh, alcohol and water. And as you can see, this is ex completely clear. This is like equal to water itself. So this is basically the transparency after it is applied. Sustenance, sust this is for sustenance. Sustenance means for how long it will last. And this is the, by comparing these all these together. Uh, H2O proof is waterproof. It's waterproofing ability. Okay, then okay. Time. One more thing. Uh, you haven't replicated. Uh, see, huh? uh, there is no complete data on. When you observe something, you have to replicate and see. Uh, but for the every uh, liquid or combination, you mentioned only one that. Yes, sir, because that's the like uh, rounded off value, sir. I've tested it many times and I rounded off to no, these values. Uh, you, you should have mentioned that you replicated and uh, uh, how many times you replicated, all that you should have already mentioned. As okay, well, sir. the other table that you have given is just a uh data uh, accident data okay fine and also what about the uh, units or uh, the table another table uh, you declared uh, the data right yes uh, the these transfer. are the scores ma'am these are the scores there is no unit these are just the scores that i gave by testing uh uh, how come you can give a one score uh, for which there is no unit? Excuse me, sir? Say, how come you are giving a score for which there is no unit? Sir, um, like for transparency, I just basically compared every single one and compared 
the normal glass to the to the applied liquid sustenance was basically how much time it lasted and then i scored it is to proof is basically oh, the okay. uh, one more thing uh, what is the uh, reference for this kind of study uh, uh, as a uh, any study been carried out on testing on this parameter what is the reference Uh, so first i based it on uh, the real like cfc's waterproof spray and these no, no. are the uh, my question is my question is when you carry out anything any experiment uh, there should be a uh, some based on some established uh, uh, thing you have to proceed further so what is yes, the sir. reference for this uh, so so my uh uncle is basically a chemistry professor and he gave all these compounds which are waterproof and i basically okay, okay. tested different so you, you have not mentioned the reference here no in the paper actually i mentioned one reference here sir about where did i get these information sir no no i want patti so your voice is not uh, audible Oh, what did you say? So your voice was not audible. Um, excuse, please excuse me. Okay, okay, fine. So, shall we move on to the next candidate, sir? Yes, ma'am. You can move. Our next candidate is JPS A zero nine zero Syed Nabiha Sultana from MS Creative High School, Murad Muradnagar, on the topic effectiveness of. Sorry, real materials as thermal insulation, recycled materials. I'm sorry. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very good morning to another present way. I am Sadhana Pesutana from Gate Nine, belongs to MS Kids School, Muradnagar branch. Standing for you to speak about effectiveness of recycled materials as thermal insulator. So, do you know what is thermal insulator? Thermal insulator is the process of reduction of heat transfer between objects in thermal contact or the change of relative temperatures. Thermal insulator consists of two thermal conductivity materials to combine to achieve an even lower system. Thermal insulator can be achieved by specially engineered methods or process as well as suitable shapes, objects, and materials. Here is a list of five common use insulator. Let's see how they can help us. Once I remember when I was studying on my top one for my building, it was very hot. I remember my physics teacher was telling us about thermal insulator that it is around the pool. From there only I got the idea of the thermal insulator. And also, insulator keeps cool things from warming up and warm things by cooling them. By doing the experiment. Some questions like how my insulator keeps cool things from warming up and warming by cooling them, and how some insulators better than the other insulator. To give you five answers, I form my hypothesis. Recycled materials which are thermal insulators would be effective insulators. Thermal insulators are thermal 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 insulators. To check my hypothesis, I collect some materials. Five and I took the five boxes and five recycled materials like cellulose, fiberglass, wood sharing, bubble wrap, and foam. A digital thermometer, a stopwatch, and a bulb. I construct five boxes out of a thick board. Show comment for the each of the test for each of the insulator. I place one of the insulator in one of the box. I place a hundred watt light bulb in an ammonia reflector lamp. Using a digital thermometer, prop check the temperature and switch on the light bulbs. Start a stopwatch and heat the box to 30 degrees Celsius above room temperature. At 30 degrees Celsius above room temperature, switch off the light bulb and record the decrease in temperature. After the temperature fell 25 degrees Celsius, record the five boxes five times using second box as a control for the each time. Record and observe which material took the longest time to cool. We observed that cellulose took the average 83 minutes to cool and fiberglass took the average 75 minutes to cool, which was scientifically longer than all other insulators. Followed by the wood shaving, which took 42 minutes to cool, and followed by the foam, which took 32 minutes to cool. And bubble wrap was the least effective insulator. It took 27 minutes to heat. 
I noticed that cellulose was the most effective insulator, but one drawback of cellulose is that it averaged 27 minutes to heat, which was much longer than all other insulators. It might be advantage in winters, but would expand the heat in summers. So fiberglass also took the longest time to cool and appears to be the most effective insulator because it, it because it took the time to cool, it also trapped the heat to conserve the energy. And I noticed that insulators like fiberglass, wood shaving, and foam was not much good than fiberglass and cellulose. One last question I want to ask you that we may can use this thermal insulator in a daily life. Thermal insulator is used in manufacturing purpose to prevent heat loss or the heat gain. It is also easily available so that two people can also attack. Thank you. <coughs> this, is research. this is my logbook. This is my photo album. And this is my kitty's book. Yeah, can you please uh, show your data table? Data analysis. In your data table, you mentioned uh, temperature, right? Uh, what temperature uh, does it denote now? Yeah, we can say 83 minutes to 30 degree Celsius, ma'am. Temperature is 30 degree Celsius. Instant temperature. What about the temperature you mentioned here? 30 degrees Celsius you mentioned, right? Yeah. What is the temperature here? Which temperature is that? I'm degrees Celsius, we're comparing this. Yeah. How did you say the effectiveness of the materials using this table? Because by temperature, how much the how much the material took the time to cool? Okay. If the material took the time to cool and it also tra to trap the heat in the come time, it is known as a thermal insulator. Okay. Um, I've got a few questions. Um, you said you're going to find uh, which material is going to be a thermal the effective thermal insulator. Yes. Okay. Which material have you? What's the result? Fiberglass. Because it took longest time to cool. It took seventy-five minutes to cool. It also took only twelve minutes to heat, which was must. Uh, Lower than you all other insulators. Okay, the setup that I can see from the chart, the cardboard boxes. Yes. Um, yes. When you measured, was it completely closed or was it open? No, it was completely closed, sir, so that we can get the correct temperature. Okay, which school uh, were you from? I'm a creative school, Maratnagar branch. Uh, which uh, state? Chilangan. Okay. So, what about the room temperature at that time? 30 degrees Celsius, yes, sir. Above the room temperature. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Any other questions? I thank think, you, uh, no, thank you. We can go oh, for the next question. Nabiha. Next, we have JPSA 091, Arshia Muhammad from Garmin Girls High School, Lancer, Golconda. On the topic, does the number of turns of wire in an electromagnet affect its strength? Assalamu alaikum 
My name is Harsha Mohammed. I am studying 9th standard from GGHC Second and Third Kolkata. At my topic is still basic age group. Dal lapit niki the dal lohe ki fine. Nani lohe kashish pani ki na dal umatasi kar sakte. Jo ek bar se mahnati to tha dal. Ham sab jante ki mahnati ek ka khud ek dusre ko dafa karte aur mukhtalif khud ek dusre ko kashish karte. Lekin tamne ki dal aur still bar ke mene ya lohe ki buladi kashish karne ki. इसके लिए मेरा मसूदा ये है दो लपेटे वाली स्टील बार पचहत्तर लपेटे वाली स्टील बार से ज्यादा लोहे की फाइल होती है और पचहत्तर लपेटे वाली स्टील बार पचास लपेटे वाली स्टील बार से ज्यादा लोहे की फाइल होती है मैं अपने मसूदे की बुनियाद की तकलीफ बनती हूँ ये तजुबा दरअसल सोर नामी लगता है इसके नाइनटीन नाइनटी एट में तजुबा किया मैंने उसके तजुबे को लेकर इसमें बहुत सारी तब्दीलियाँ करते हुए आप सब पेश कर दी इसके लिए मेरी दरगाह आला थे लोहे के बुरादे स्टील बैग तांबे की तार और अनाज का पैमाना इसके लिए हमें स्टील बैग के स्टील बैग के ऊपर सौ मरतबा मजबूती से तांबे की तार को लपेटें और लोहे के बुरादे की कशिश करकर एक ब्रश की मदद से निकाल कर वेटिंग मशीन पर वेट करेंगे और नोट करेंगे फिर पचहत्तर मरतबा लपट कर फिर यही तजुबा दोहराएंगे और पचास मरतबा लपट कर फिर यही तजुबा दोहराएंगे जब मैंने ये तजुबा मुकम्मिल किया तो मैंने देखा कि जब मैंने सौ मरतबा तांबे की तार को लपटा तो उसने 18.15 लोहे की बरादरी की जब पचहत्तर मरतबा लपटा तो 15.55 लोहे की बरादरी की और जब पचास मरतबा लपटा तो 9.9 लोहे की बरादरी की यानी इस तजुर्बे से मैंने ये रिजल्ट रिजल्ट नोट किया है कि जितनी मरतबा हम तांबे की तार को उसी बार के इर्द गिर्द लपटे उतनी ज्यादा उसमें कोशिश करने की सलाहियत पैदा हो जाएगी यानी चिपकने की सलाहियत उसमें पैदा हो इस तजुबे इस प्रोजेक्ट से मैं लोगों को ये बताना चाहती हूँ कि कौन सी दाँत बेहतर है मखनाती इसको उठाने में जिसकी वजह से हमें मालूम चल जाए कि विच द बेस्ट मटेरियल ऑफ कौन सी दाँत बेहतर है मखनाती इसको उठाने में शुक्रिया एनी वन क्वेश्चन Uh, that you have done here is a known fact, right? Okay, ma. क्या भी नहीं ये जो project आप किए हैं ये तो already पता है ना ये कि number of turns of coils वो जो है electromagnetic property को depend करता है तो इससे आप क्या बताने चाहते हैं? देखिए सर ये जो तजुबा है दरअसल हो चुका है जो सर नामी लड़की के लिए तजुबा किया था लेकिन उसका तजुबा बहुत ही डिफिकल्ट था उन्होंने बहुत सारे मटेरियल को एक्स्ट्रा यूज किया बैटरी जोड़ कर मैंने उनके तजुबे लेकर इसमें तब्दीलियां करते हुए ये बताया कि कम मटेरियल्स में भी हम इस तजुबे को दोहरा सकते और अगर ये तजुबे से ये जो रिजल्ट आया कि तांबी की दाग को हम जितनी मतलब इसके बाद के एक दिन लगेंगे तो लोहे की बुरादे उठेंगे और इसके लिए मैं लोगों को बता चाहता हूँ कि बीच दांत कौन सी तांबे की तार कौन सी तार बेहतर है मगर आप इसको उठाने के अच्छा ठीक है ठीक है ओके मैं शुक्रिया ऑल द बेस्ट एनीवन क्वेश्चन नो मैं वी कैन गो फॉर द नेक्स्ट कैंड थैंक यू मिस अर्शिया वी नाउ हैव जेपीएसए जीरो नाइन टू साइड � from ms creative high school muradnagar and the topic is your hair dye free from ammonia assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh good morning to one and all present over here i am seeing the zoham jahid a great night ms ready school muradnagar branch standing before you to speak on the topic is your hair dye free from ammonia so do you know ma'am why people are using more hair dyes nowadays they are using hair dyes to cover the gray hairs and they are getting gray hairs because of washing it with boron water as it is a hard water and contains a lot of minerals in them even celebrities are coloring their hairs to look more fashionable so just recently i have been to my aunt's house and unfortunately i came to know that she was suffering with breast cancer to inquire about that as i went to her room i found the hair dye packet which she used frequently in the ingredients list I check for ammonia also because it is 
the half a chemical and half a lethal effect on our body. So from there, I got an idea to check the presence of ammonia in different hair dyes. Some of the questions strike in your mind, like, is your hair dye free from ammonia? And does it have any harmful effect on our body? What is ammonia? Ammonia is a colorless gas which has a characteristic of pungent smell. It contributes significantly to the nutritional needs of the terrestrial organism by serving as a precursor to food and fertilizers. Ammonia is both caustic and hazardous in its concentrated form. Ammonia is most widely produced in the it is known as anhydrous ammonia. Nowadays, it is used in the preparations of cosmetics like hair dyes, lipsticks, foundations, etc. Ammonia is a useful chemical but not for our skin or for our hair. It is even essential in our body as a building block of making proteins. It is flammable toxic by inhalation corrosive causes but after the usage of hair dyes, skin redness, pain blisters, a cough, etc. are seen. So we should avoid usage of ammonia in hair dyes and cosmetics. So uh, I have done an experiment. So for that, my hypothesis was the brands which are labeled as ammonia free were still containing ammonia in them. So my variables for independent were independent variable was effect of ammonia on the health of a person, dependent variable was quantity of ammonia in different brands of hair dyes, and control variable was keeping the age and the quantity of uh, hair dye constant. So I have done three tests. So the materials which I required was sample one, sample two, and sample three. Sample one was Godrej hair color, sample two was indica hair color, and sample three was Garnier hair color. And I even required necessary reagent, hydrochloric acid, copper sulfate, test tubes, test tube holders, spatula, dropper, etc. So I have done three tests, I have said, as I have said before already. So in the test one, I have taken the fresh samples of hair dyes and I have added Nessler reagent to it. What is Nessler reagent? It is an alkaline solution of potassium mercuric iodide. So there was a brown color PPT formed, precipitate was formed. And then in test two, I have taken again the fresh samples and I have added hydrochloric acid to it. So there was white fumes formed. And then in test three, again taking the fresh samples of hair dyes and then I have added copper sulfate. The copper sulfate was mixed with water, so it was cupric sulfate. So there was a deep blue color PPT form. So the data which I analysis was in Godrej hair color, there was a dark PPT form. In Gar Indica hair color, there was a light PPT form. And in Garnier hair color, there was again a dark PPT form. So in, in the result, in test one, there was a brown color PPT form which showed the presence of ammonia. In test two, there was white fume form which also indicated the presence of ammonia. And in test three, there was a blue color PPT form which also indicated the presence of ammonia. So from this project, I conclude that the brands which were labeled as ammonia free were still containing ammonia in them. And after taking uh, indica, the sample two showed the less amount of ammonia when compared with other samples. So the application of this project in our daily life is ammonia is a harmful chemical and the products which contain ammonia are also even harmful for us. So there should be awareness raised about the products which contain ammonia in them. Thank you. And I've kept Hina as a standard. And we should use Hina also because it is our, our, our prophet Sunnah. And we should, it is a reading not containing ammonia in them. So I've got a few questions for you uh, regarding yes. hair dye. Mm. Yes, sir. See, uh, your, your topic is, is your hair dye? Free from ammonia. Free from ammonia. Okay. And you have said that uh, some yeah. companies name you said Garnier, Godrej. Yes, and you are saying that they have, some few have uh, ammonia in them. More and ammonia and, the, and the one is having less ammonia. Right. Yes. But, ammonia. but I could see they, in the commercials, they say they don't have any ammonia at all. Yes, sir. In, even in the packet also, it is written no ammonia. But when tested, they were proved to be ammonia positive. Okay, why they are using ammonia? So because ammonia is helping the, like, the it is helping for the hairs like the hair dye to reach and the air, hair properly and it shouldn't go like easily. It shouldn't be no. removed. See, actually the hair dye it is actually a dye that we are using. Okay, and this dye they work only under alkaline medium. Okay, alkaline medium meaning you should have pH greater than seven. Hence, we are using ammonia. Okay. Uh, so that is the reason why they are using ammonia. Not only ammonia, there are some other chemicals also. 
which can affect the uh, peroxide also there uh, yes very good uh, now uh, you see since it is already known fact you should have done it a little different you should have taken more uh, uh, different types of uh, hair dye you should have seen why they are not having any ammonia is it true or if the composition of that our uh, dye what is the dye composition okay and in which condition it works that you have to see and no, finally no, no, no. no it's just a suggestion i am telling you for the you can go you can do it for your next project if you want the uh, next thing is if you said about henna yes sir uh, why when it uh, when we apply to our skin or hair it shows some color so it is a red color but it is it is not contain a single amount of ammonia in it and it is even our profit so which now. chemical you, you since you done you said about henna which chemical is there inside it sir ammonia is not contain any chemical it is a herb henna henna i am asking about henna in henna what chemical is responsible for the coloration Herb and so uh, I think the plants which are containing the chemicals. Okay, okay. See, any compound, any um, substance will is a chemical. Okay, so in henna you have a lawson. Okay, which reacts with keratin, it gives you color, and we don't require ammonia here because this lawson reacts at a uh, almost a little acidic, 5.5 to 6 pH. It is enough. So when we apply to our skin. Uh, keratin we can find okay uh, yes, sir. Uh, still process next time i'll do it with more research on this project okay okay do you use uh, red henna or black henna red henna because black henna is also made in the industries and it is also containing ammonia in it it contains a dye some amount of dye it para i think uh, ppd uh, yes. dye paraffinal in dye i mean dye is there okay ma all the best thank you sir ma'am ma'am would you like to ask yeah child? you can ask other participant okay our next participant is spsa 002 shaikh mansur from unity public school who is going to tell us the effects of microwave radiation on plant life السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. I am Mr. Sheikh Mansour from Class 11, Unit Public School. Today my topic is about the effect of microwave radiation on plant life. Microwave has become oven has become an essential product in the houses. It is used for heating food items in a short period of time. But the food which we eat is good for eating as the food has passed through the microwave. radiation what the microwave radiation is harmful for us when it directly touches our skin but what will happen if we eat the food which was microwave does different length of microwave radiation affect us microwave oven blasts food with a high amount of energy which results in heating it simply passes through the food items which passes through the fats and other ingredients which does not harm any other substances in this project we are going to see how the microwave radiation affect the orga other organisms or in the plant life the materials required for this project are four small seed containers sterilized with with sterilized soil four 
packets of bakeries, microwave oven, four small bowls, four prepared petri dish, radish seeds, and note and pen. Procedure. Take care. Take a cellulite soil pot, place some radish seeds on them, water it and keep it aside. Note the differences. Take a petri dish, put some radish seeds on them, put it in the oven, microwave it for 10 seconds, take it and then sow it in the soil. Don't forget to water them. At the same time, take some bakeries, mix it with the sugar solution, note the differences. And take another bakeries, mix it the sugar solution, keep it in the microwave oven for 10 seconds and note the differences. After the plants germinate, the normal plant, which was not microwave, after three days, its height was three millimeter. After six days, it was five millimeter. The plant, which was microwave, after three days, it was five millimeter. And after six days, it was nine millimeter. The yeast which, which we mixed in the sugar solution had a, after five minutes, the normal was, normal which was not microwave, yeast was one centimeter, bubbled up. After 10 minutes, it bubbled up for three centimeter. The yeast which was microwave bubbled up for, after five minutes, it bubbled up for four centimeter and after 10 minutes, it for 10 centimeter. As the plants which we grew, as the plants which we grew, which had a higher growth rate and grow taller, had a higher growth rate, which was not good for us. It was artificial as it was microwave. So conclusion. So using normal food is better rather than using uh, microwaved food. Thank you. This is Agla Faisal. Okay. Um, your topic again. What you said is, is plant life. Uh, effect of microwave radiation on uh, plant life. Yeah. But what was your result? It grew more, sir. It had a higher growth rate. You said something about uh, health of human beings, health issues. No, sir. What will happen if we eat the food which was microwave? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so we are not going to keep uh, a plant to grow. We are not going to keep the seeds in microwave and we are not going to grow it, right? I, I'm going to just plant it in a soil, dig the soil, going to uh, keep the seed, put some water and it's going to grow. So yes, uh, where, uh, how come this microwave radiation comes there? This, uh, this project... So, sir, so what will happen if we eat the food? So I did it with the seeds, sir. What it affects, how it affects the seeds and the yeast. So, okay. so then the topic should be different, right? The topic should be different. Effect of microwave radiation on plant life, you said. Now you're saying that you wanted to check uh, the food that we're having after using microwave is healthy or not. The topic is too entirely different. Okay. Okay, anyhow, you have done some work. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. And all the best. Would you like to ask? All the best. Yeah. Our next candidate is SPSA 018, Shaista Farheen S from Fatima CSA School. On the topic, illumination of rooms in congested buildings during the temper uh, temperoscopic method. Assalamu alaikum, man. Yeah. 
Assalamu alaikum and good morning to one and all. I am Shahid Safarheen from Fatima Central Senior Secondary School. Here to present you my project on illumination of rooms in congested buildings during daytime using periscopic method. I got the insight of this project when my father used to say how he used to play using plain mirrors by letting the sunlight outside into his home. So here I got an insight like why not let, let the sunlight in the terrace into our homes and light them up with light. So here I have made this project using easy technical methods without the aid of electricity and with uh, one-time investment and zero future expenses. The reason why I took up this project is climate change is just impacting the whole world and yet the carbon dioxide emissions keep increasing. So in, so in order to put down the carbon dioxide levels, we have to also cut down the electricity consumption. So I have made this project with very easy technical methods. So here I have made the central body with two openings and I have placed two plane mirrors here uh, at an angle 45 degree each. And for the upper arm, I have uh, placed a convex lens. So this convex lens converges the sunlight. Uh, so I have made this lens according to the focal lens so that it converges accordingly. And for the lower arm, I have made a concave lens. Uh, I have uh, placed it in the lower arm so that it diverges the light accordingly. And I have also placed it, uh, made it according to the focal lens. So here the light passes through this uh, convex lens, then uh, reflects on the plane mirror shape here, and it again uh, reflects back here, and then it comes out through the convex lens. So here's a demo. So I'm just placing a torch over here, and the light comes out over here. So uh, the sun is placed at an uh, infinity distance. So from there, the light will directly focus on the focus, and then it will again get reflected. And uh, here, at the focal point, from here, it will again diverge and go. So in this project, I have found out the result that lenses with smaller focal lengths gave a better output. And uh, when I use concave lenses with smaller focal lengths, they actually gave a higher width of glow. So uh, I conclude that this project got an output that uh, lenses with smaller focal lengths gave better output. I have also mentioned all my uh, readings and recordings in my logbook. And uh, this project can be made into a grand success if higher level equipments are used. This can be used in basements of factories, houses, and uh, all places where there is no light. So this project can be impl uh, implemented successfully. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah, how did you select the focal length pad? On what basis did you select the focal length? Mom, I just wanted to. Mom, I only wanted to uh, experiment whether which which type of focal lens, which different focal lens uh, gave better output. So here, I randomly selected a fo uh, lens with smaller focal lens and another lens with uh, bigger focal lens, and I just tried different combinations and found the output. Okay, on what basis you mentioned satisfactory and not satisfactory? Um, according to the luminosity and the width of the glow. Okay. Yeah, okay, ma'am. Any other questions? Uh, okay, no questions. Good. All the best. Thank you, Mr. Aista. Our next candidate is SBSA 019 SM Pranav from Fatima CSS School, on, who's going to give us the analysis of aluminum transformer with various loads. Good morning all. I am Pranav from class 11, studying in Fatima CS School. Today I am going to explain about my project, Analysis of Element Transformer with Various Loads. Before we go into the project, I like to explain how I go get into this project. Basically, transform is a device which, which transfers electric energy from one circuit to many other circuits. Most of the transfers are made up of copper. And nowadays the copper rate is increasing. So I thought, why, why, not, for, for, why not to find an alternative? So I go, go with aluminum because aluminum and copper are very similar, many similarities. And, and 
very similar resistance and for the, for the element transformer uh, for this analysis i used the regulation method to find the regulation of analysis analysis of the aluminum transformer for this i used the motor and 24 volt step down transformer step down transformers and on the primary side at 230 volts is coming means the second side will be 24 volts this is rated to 24 volts so i used the 24 volt transformer and a 60 volt motor and a 24 volt bulb at first i calculated the voltage with no load the primary voltage is 230 volts and the secondary voltage is 23 volts with no load and i connected the and i connected the 24 volt bulb you can see that uh, the input voltage is 20, 220 volts and the secondary voltage is 22.5 and also connected the motor and the motor for the input is 230 volts and the secondary voltage is 19 volts for the analysis i calculate this regulation with using a regulation formula when i calculate the regulation for, for the led bulb it's coming like 2.17 which is very low, uh, very, which is low means the plus or, uh, the regulation is below plus or minus, minus five, then the regulation is good. For the bulb I gave, I, I, I got like 2.17. And I increased the voltage to 60 volts. Even though it's a 24, trans, 24 volts transformer, I increased the voltage to 60 volts motor. And, and therefore the regulation came as 17.39. So the regulation is very high, right? So I can conclude that with the, with the rate rate of regulation 24 volts, this transformer performs well. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Uh, what makes you to go with aluminium? Or do you uh, want to compare the, both? Uh, because the copper rate is increasing day by day. Uh, it's like one meter is uh, 200 something like that. So I saw it go on with aluminum. Can you please the circuit diagram you used for this project? Okay, ma'am. Wait, ma'am. Hold on. Two. You can you uh, please explain this? Ma'am, can it? Oh, okay, ma'am. Ma'am, currently I don't have a circuit diagram. I will explain what what I did, ma'am. Okay. Ma'am, I can. I connected a uh, connected uh, transformer. This is for a primary side one, and this is secondary side. The primary side is to 230 volts, man. I connected the wire to it, 230 volts. This is a uh, this way the 230 volts is passing, and here it's uh, 24 volts. This second this rated to 24 volts, man. So only 24 volts is available. With no no load, I calculated it's 23 volts. When I connected it to it, uh, I connected it to a motor. So the so the secondary voltage is like uh, 19 volts, man. Okay, fine. Okay, all the best. Thank you. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Um, I got a few questions, though I'm from chemistry background. Uh, the copper and uh, aluminium. Is the student there? Uh, are you able to hear me? I think uh, we didn't hear. Okay. Uh, okay, then we can go for the next term. Thank you, Prana. Our next candidate is SPSA020, Mohammed Moedin Rafai from Fatima CSA School. Going to talk on the analysis of power factor when RLC connected in the series and parallel.
मोहम्मद मोहिदुल्लाह मुफ़ाई गुड मॉर्निंग एसपी अस्सलाम वालेकुम गुड मॉर्निंग टू वन एंड ऑल I am Muhammad Mohsin Difai of Class 11 from Fatima CS School. My topic is analysis of power factor in RC connectors in series and parallel. The aspect of my project is in electrical power system. Power factor is very important parameter that defines how efficient the electrical power is being utilized with the connected load. Power factor of RC circuit is dependent on individual values of frequencies and and frequencies and components, and it also depends upon how the components are connected in the circuit. If power factor is poor, say less than 0.8, then the effectiveness of usage of electrical current reduces, which results in higher losses in supply system and higher electricity bills for consumers. In this project, power factor is analyzed and improved by connecting the load in series and parallel RLC load. So I have used the materials used as residual load, inductive load, capacity load, connecting wise, watt meter and ohm meter. The main aim of my project is to reduce the electricity bill. In, in real time, we are using three types of load. One is resistive load, and one is inductive load, and one is capacitive load. So power factor can be leading or lagging or unity. In real time, uh, in the, we are come across in industries is this, is this inductive load, which is lagging power factor. The cause of lagging power factor is I mean, more increased in the voltage, which we get, uh, which uh, we have more electricity bill. So reduce that. We should uh, may compensate the uh, lagging power factor. To compensate it, we have to connect. Uh, Capacitor uh, to uh, to the circuit. So, um, lagging power factor uh, could be uh, unity. So, uh, I have used uh, two methods. One is the parallel RL circuit and series RL circuit. So, in parallel RL circuit, I have measured the values at zero point two four, and power factor in parallel RL circuit, it is zero point nine five. And this method uh, can reduce the electricity bill. So, in uh, power factor is. Uh, Power factor plays a major role in electrical supply. So, in in our house or industries, we are getting a lagging power factor. Lagging power factor which uh, cause more voltage. If it cause more voltage, if we give more load, it gets more current. If we take more current, we get more electricity bill. So, we have to um, if lagging uh, if power factor is more, so the inductive load is more. If inductive load is uh, if power factor is leading, uh, capacity load is more. If capacitor load is more, we have to compensate it. So, we have connecting a conductor. Uh, so in parallel RS circuit, uh, I I have measured that in uh, the I have got the result that in uh, comparing to uh, series RS circuit, I uh, in parallel RS circuit have good power factor compared to series RS circuit. So I have got zero point nine five, which is uh, it is near to unity. So in unity is one. So in, I have got a power factor zero point nine five. So my conclusion is it has been proved that. Parallel RLC circuit would provide better power factor compared to series RLC circuit. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, yeah. Uh, why don't you? Why why you didn't go with uh, uh, multiple trials? In your tabulation, you mentioned a single reading, right? Did you find all those readings in the first trial itself? Yes, ma'am. In series, I, it was uh, I didn't get ma'am, but in parallel RC circuit I got the value ma'am, zero point nine five. Uh, see, already uh, it is uh, proven right. For example, uh, parallel circuits has more advantages than series, right? Yes, ma'am. Uh, what is the intention of uh, your project? To reduce the electricity bill, ma'am. Uh, can you please explain uh, uh, the definition for uh, the power factor? What ma'am? Power factor. What do you mean by power factor? Ma'am, uh, power factor is a parameter, ma'am, that defines how efficient the electrical power is used, ma'am. Uh, impedance and uh, uh, can you please explain that impedance? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, in series R S circuit, ma'am, I have uh, got the power factor formula, ma'am. Yeah, uh, that is fine. But I am asking the definition. Uh, what is the meaning of impedance? Uh, the value, ma'am, ohms. I got the two ninety four point three zero. Okay, all the best. Okay, fine. Thank you.
Next. Next, we have SPSA 021 MV Bhumika from Fatima CSA School on the magnetic metal armor. Ms. Bhumika. A happy good morning to all you listening this. I'm Bhumika of Class 11, studying in Fatima CS School, here to explain my project, Magnetic Metal Armor. So the abstract is, we humans have lived in this earth for more than 2,000 years. And whenever we see a bird, we'll think as why, how it is flying and why can't we fly? So, and with this curiosity, we have also built airplanes and jets and many, many vehicles. But that experience can't be matched with how birds fly. So, what if we could go fly as the born with me? So, this project not only allows humans to fly, but it can be made into a compact box and can be made to work automatically so that we could replace it with drones for delivery and other stuff. So, the statement of the problem is due to the force created by the magnetic field produced by the current, the object will levitate. So the height that is raised is directly proportional to the magnetic field and the current that is passed in the object. So the hypothesis, due to the downward force created by the magnetic field produced by the current, the armor will fly. So the design of study is my independent variable is force and my dependent variable is electricity and height and my control variable is temperature and acid. So these uh, tabulations are rendered from values and found the output. So these are photographs. So these are my circuits, and here I'll place a meter and voltmeter so that whether to check my current is being passed or not and how much is being passed. So this is the circuit diagram. The base of my project is Fleming's left hand rule. So it is stated that with Fleming's left hand rule, the current, the magnetic field, and the force are mutually perpendicular to each other. As you could see, this is my armor. And I'll be placing the circuit in the spine of my armor, and the current will be flowing in this direction. So that that will create a magnetic field that, is, that will be upward, that will be acted upward, and that will create a force that will be acted downward. And the downward force pushes the object above, so it will levitate. So the procedure. So the circuit connect the ammeter and voltmeter to the armature. And we can connect photovoltaic cells to it. And we can also connect each other with battery, so that if my battery is damaged or not, we could use it as a second chance. And then for the metal armor, we, can, uh, we need to choose a metal like steel or anything, which is a good conductor of electricity, and we could force it to our desired shape, and we could uh, connect all the parts with bolts and screws. And uh, we should also use a bow attachment to the human so that he isn't electrocuted by the current path. So, the, and as you see, this is the demo. I placed my battery here, and you could see, uh, this is a thin metal, and I'm Owning this battery, as you could see. So the current I am passing, it only allows the force to be attached with this. And this is an electromagnet solenoid, so it's an artificial magnet. So not only this, and um, it can lift up to three kg. As you could see, I'm going to put it with a bigger metal. So this is a bigger metal than that, and I'm using 12 volts here. I'm owning it. It's lifting. But this force is, uh, so with more force, we can make it to levitate. Bigger object. So now the result and discussion is, by replacing the levitating ball with a human sized armor, and replacing the concept of lev levitation with magnetic, uh, electromagnetic force, we could raise the armor to height. So the conclusion is, my hypothesis, due to the downward directed force created by the magnetic field produced by the current, the armor is like has been proved, and this is due to the force created by the magnetic field, and this height is directly proportional to the magnetic field and fast. fast. Any questions? Yeah, what do you mean by solenoid? So a solenoid it acts as a bar magnet. So it um, if we flow current to it, it passes from north pole to south pole, and it has some uh, turnings in it, a copper wire turnings, and it is um, how much of a magnetic field it creates is directly proportional to the turn and the current that is being passed. So in this case, this solenoid acts as a bar magnet. Okay. Okay, I'm all the best. Thank you. 
Sir, would you like to question? No questions from my side. All the best. Next, we have SPSA 022 S. Taufik Ahmed from Fatima CSS School on electricity, electricity generator by using piezo. My main aim of the project is building a piezo electric generator for my building. To do this, to import it into a circuit as a piezo electric generator. Hello everyone. I am Taufik Ahmed of Class 12 from Fatima Central Senior Secondary School, Saidapet. I have done a project in physical science category in senior level. My topic is electricity generator by using piezo. My main aim of the project is building a piezo electric generator. Taufik Ahmed, could you be louder? To do this, they incorporate into a certain converts moment. They take a mechanical energy into electrical energy, which is stored in a capacitor. Once enough charges. Once enough is energy is stored, they flip a switch to a light up and LED. Energy can be converted using the current state of technology for piezoelectric materials. Hypothesis piezo is the best element to conduct electricity. Materials require piezo elements, breadboard, 22 AWG wire, soldering gun, LED lights, multimeter, wire strippers, capacitors, breadboard jumper wires, diodes, as well as switch. Design of study is independent variable is piezo element, dependent variable is voltage across capacitor, control variable is range of capacitor. This is a calculation. These are the five readings which I have took from my electricity generator. First column is number of tapping, second column is electricity uh, charge in multimeter by tapping piezo, then third column is number of seconds that bulb blows. This is a five tapping, I have got 5.6 volt. Then number of seconds that bulb flows is three seconds. So for, from that, I have to uh, find readings of the, my uh, generator. Photographer, these are some samples of my uh, generator. So let's move on into procedure. Steps to make a breadboard. The first step is to make a diode rectifier bridge on the breadboard. Each of the wire further from the black screws are next to it. So it's 1A, 1B, 5C, and 6A. Then connect the piezo element to the breadboard by inserting the black light into 5E and the red light into 6E. Then connect the LED bar. Then hook up the capacitor by putting the positive and the negative. Use breadboard jumper wires to connect sockets 11A and 5J. Hook up the switch to 5S and 15P. Then clip the black LED of the multimeter onto the capacitor LED in socket 11S and the red LED of the multimeter onto the capacitor LED in socket 11P. Then with the switch turned off, we should tap the element till the capacitor is charged at least 8 volts and the multimeter rates 8 volt or higher. So let's uh, move on into working principle of our electricity generator. So this is my electricity generator circuit. So this is a piezo element. Then this is the battery. So while I'm tapping this piezo element, you can see that the LED bulb is glowing. So So you can able to see that the voltage is increasing. So now you can able to see that the bulb is going. So my result is the main objective is to generate electricity for people by applying these cases and convert it into mechanical energy into electrical energy. Electricity generator by using piezo has been proved successfully by glowing LED light. I have chosen smaller capacitors for my do my project, but you can also use larger capacitors also to flow brighter than usual. A larger capacitor takes longer to charge, but it results in a brighter flash. So, conclusion of my project is my hypothesis: piezo is the best element to conduct electricity. This has been proved. This is because piezo element is mechanical energy, and by tapping it converts into electrical energy, and the capacitor has charge and bulk flows brighter. So, thank you. Any question?
No question. Small, the best. Um, I got a few questions. Uh, the first question is, uh, I think this is already a known fact, right? By using a piezo electricity is there. Uh, so you have just done that experiment. So what is something new that you are actually trying to yeah, actually, I recommend to people that uh, we can able to consume more electricity by using this piezo element. For example, we can able to charge our phone by uh, using this piezo element, and for harvesting devices also we can. Okay, uh, um, piezo electric materials. Actually, how uh, how come these piezo electric materials uh, produce current by applying actually, uh, piezo, by applying a mechanical force or by applying some pressure here? Yeah, actually, piezo element is mechanical energy. By applying uh, pressure on it, it will con convert it into electric energy. Actually, the capacitor is the main reason. Capacitor will charge. When we apply pressure on the piezo element, the mm. capacitor will charge itself. And uh, when, the, when we flip the switch, it will uh, glow LED. Do all materials exist as can be piezoelectric material? Can all materials be piezoelectric? <laughs> No, no. Only this piezo element uh, can be uh, used. What kind for, of property? Uh, what kind of property it requires to be piezoelectric? There should be some property different from other materials, so that it should be showing the piezoelectric effect. <clears throat> Actually, we can use uh, more uh, components for uh, producing electricity, but uh, I suggest uh, that piezo element is the best best element to conduct electricity. Okay, right. I will give you a simple suggestion. See, uh, what you have done is already known to us. Instead of that, you should have taken different type of materials and you should have come and should have compared them and you should have told us which could be a better piezoelectric material, uh, okay. which is cost effective and which is easy to make. Okay, you can do it for your future work, I think. Yeah, and okay. also see what kind of materials, what kind of properties the materials require to be piezoelectric. It is something concerned with the unit cell. You might have solid state. If I, I do not know. You are 12th, right? 11th or 12th. Yeah, yes, so in solid state, you might have learned some non-symmetric uh, unit cells are there. So you can see those yeah. things. Okay. All the best. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Next, we have SPSA. 024 Alicia Afreen, Noises Junior College. She's going to speak on that artificial intelligence versus machine learning versus deep learning. Miss Alicia Afrin. she's absent. Ms. Alicia Afrin. Aisha, ma'am, she's absent. Okay. So we move on to the next candidate. PRSA006. Now fear S from Limra International School. She's going to talk on the tallest paper tower. Salam alaikum. Welcome to National Science Fair. I am Nafia from Uber International School in Grade 4. My title of the project is Tallest Paper Tower. My statement of the problem is it is possible to build a paper tower that is as tall as possible and it can support a weight or a load at the top. I share that the hypothesis that all tallest tower made from 32 sheets of printer paper can hold a weight of 400 or 450 grams at the top. 
My purpose of the project is engineers have design idea wide variety of observation towers in different shapes and sizes. Unlike regular buildings, skyscrapers, observation towers may have a mostly hollow structure. With an observation deck on top, other similar structures that have a hollow frame. With a heavy load at the top can include water towers and radio towers. I happened to see the engineering challenge of constructing the tallest paper tower in the internet and this kindles me to do this project. Abstracting this project, my aim is to build a tallest paper tower which can hold a weight of 400 or 450 grams at the top. Beams are long skinny elements used to make many structures like towers and bridges. An object that is being pushed is in compression and an object that is being pulled is in tension. Beams can be in either tension or compression depending on how the tower is designed. The shape of the beam can dramatically affect its strength. For an example, it is very easy to bend a flat piece of paper. It becomes much harder to bend the paper if it is folded in half or multiple times are rolled into a tube. This rectangle window very easily in the thin direction. The cross section of the piece of paper rolled into a tube is a circle. Yeah, I beam is a common shape used in many structures. Materials. Materials records are scissor, elephant tape, a4 sheets and load. I have done five, five prototypes. This is my first prototype. This is square, basic square lamination. The height of the first tower is 87.2 cm. This is my second prototype. I measured the height of the second prototype. This is 139.2 cm. I flat it balanced it. It balanced it to books. This is my third prototype. This is square, square dimension. I measure the height of the second, third prototype. This is 138.2 cm. It balanced two books. This is my third prototype. I, I measure the height of the Fourth question that this is 140.2 cm. Measure the height. I balance it balanced with three books. This is my final project. This is recent one. I tried it two days back. I measure the height of the final that is 158.2 centimeter. It balanced it. It balanced it three books. Procedure. The procedure is as follows. I had used only at most 32 pieces of paper. Also not more than one roll of tape. The bottom of the tower was taped to horizontal surface. I, before starting, I had sketched some design out on paper and then tried them with papers. Then I tried seven, then I tried a single beam, several connections between the beams of the tower and before building the entire things. Observation. Then I completed construction of the tower and tested its stability. An official test was also conducted by placing a white piece of water bottle for the stability. I started a stopwatch. After one minute has elapsed, I used a tape to measure the distance from the supporting surface to the bottom of the bottle. Then I made the calculation using the formula. Total score is equal to distance to the bottom of the load in centimeter minus two into number of pieces of paper. Using 
total score is equal to 140.2 centimeter 2 into 332 using this i am trying to arrive at the conclusion now i am trying now i am trying to arrive at the best design of the tower using five prototype okay. Oh. Can you show me the data table if you have any values you want to see in the sun read? You have the data? You have you have data. You have data data. The numbers you're so you're giving the numbers about uh, the heat from the bottom and the weight of the books that you put. Can you show me that table? Can you hear me? you can can you hear me yes sir ah right so i want to see some numbers i want to see some numbers you have built a model right nafia yes sir you have built some models right yes sir how many models you built four five models sir Five models. On what basis you separated the five? One is, huh? Books in diamond, sir. Diamond? Five. No, no. There, I see some triangle there. I see some rectangle there. Yes, sir. You have any such any pattern? Why you use square or why you use rectangle? Why you use? Yes, sir. This is square. This is square. This is square. This is okay. Square. This is triangle. Okay. So which one comes out as the best? Final prototype. Which one? Final prototype, sir. Okay. You have have you have to prove it in numbers, right? How much sir? weight it 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 hold it holds? Relatively, relative to correct to others, compared to others, how much weight it it held? I can't hear, sir. The weight of the books that you put waste, right? Seven fifty grams, sir. For all the four. Four. Four books. Can you show me that uh, numbers? You have written the numbers. No. Yes, sir. Where are the numbers? You have your log book is there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So what you have to do is you have to put everything in in terms of the numbers in the table, the geometrical shapes that you have taken. the height that you have chosen the constant the variables okay so if you did that it would be more impressive yes, sir. okay you should you should measure the sides you know you should have the same parameter for all the four models that you have built now uh, you cannot have a linear one and uh, measure the weight it, it can withstand yes, got sir. it okay okay thank you thank you sir thank you sir Next we have P E R S A O O seven Muhammad Ashik N from Limra International School, based on pop skill drone. Assalamu alaikum. I am Ashik, Limra International School. Title of my project is Pop Skill Drone. 
development of the problem, it is possible to construct the road using obstacles and study the factors. Mama Dashik, you don't seem to be audible. Please be louder. Ah, okay. Statement of the problem: It is possible to construct a drone using popsicle and study the factors that affect the speed of drone. I state that the hypothesis: The speed of the drone is dependent on the uh, weight. Yeah. What's that? What's that? Sir. Ah, uh, you can proceed. Proceed. I stated the hypothesis: the speed of the drone is dependent on the way is added to the drone. As that drones are useful for recreational use and for aerial photography. Quadcopters is also a type of drone that has four propeller. Each propeller is driven by a spinning motor. These motors are connected to an onboard battery by an electrical circuit. When the propeller spins, the generator lifts. The force that pushes the drone up in order for the drone to remain in the air or fly upward. The lift must be greater than or equal to the drone's weight. The force that pulls it down towards the air. In this project, I have made an attempt to make my mini drone using obstacles and steady the speed or the lift if more weight is added to the drone. Variables for a particular prototype are used to the same type. Of motor and the propeller as a constant, the speed is the dependent variable, and weight added to the drone is independent variable. Materials materials are required in this project: ice cream sticks, PC motor, connecting wires, plastic propellers, electric tape, battery with the holder, hot glue. Gun. The third, I have constructed the mini drone using popsicles and. When I started to doing the trials and try to find out my lift of my drone, procedure is as follows: I used the popsicle stick and the glue them to form a pear-shaped frame. The motors were fixed to the tips of the popsicle stick, and the straws were attached to the ends of the popsicle stick to form legs. Then, link pieces of wires. Were connected the motor wires so that the negative and positive connections to the battery is ready. Now the propellers were fixed onto the motor shafts. Two more pieces of straw, two more pieces of straw were fixed vertically to the middle of the frame, opposite to each other. All the electrical connections were covered with electrical tape. Then the then the battery was inserted inside the battery pack. The drone was supported with the two long sticks that can fit exactly through two straws. The two sticks were placed parallel to placed parallel to each other, which could help the drone slide smoothly up and down the sticks. A piece of foam was placed at the base of the stick, which provides some padding when the drone falls. Methodology: The drone was tested by turning, turning the battery pack. Prototype one. When I started my battery, I found uh, that. Dear, dear friend, can you directly go over to data? So I seen the procedure. You explain the data if you have any. You explain to me the data. Any data that is there? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Ah, uh, yes. You show me the table or graph or whatever you have about the data, about weight you have added and have tested the flight. Ah, uh, this one. You just explain this one and conclude. What is your conclusion there? The conclusions from weight added to the drone affect the speed of the drone. Ah. Hmm. Is not that well known? Why do you choose the? Why do you choose the popsicle stick? Yeah, the graph is good. You go over to the previous previous slide. You can go. Yeah. 
go over to the previous slide weights are weightless sir uh, yeah this one explain to me this the trial 1 trial 2 trial 3 what is trial 1 what is trial 2 trial 1 trial 2 you can you explain that can you hear me hello i can't hear you can you hear me ahmed ashik Mohammad Ashik, can you hear us? Uh, right, right. I am just asking what is your data? What do you want to tell about trial one, two, three? Can you hear me? Ashik, it's a good work. <laughs> oh, any other uh, compare, man? Can you hear me? I, I'm audible. Yes, sir. Oh, ah, yeah. uh, it's a voice. The voice is not coming. Muhammad Ashik, could you speak up? Oh, I'm not hearing. Ashik, sound or lie? No sound. See if you have muted. Muhammad Ashik. No, you are not audible. So again, we can cut off, ma'am. In cut off and. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Can you move on to the next candidate, sir? Yeah, yeah, you can move on. Our next candidate is P E R S A O O eight Irshad Mohammed from the Bay International School on Smart Trash Can. رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My name is Yusha Muhammad and my, and my project title is Smart Trash Can uh, Can you Next have you uh, have you ever dreamed of a clean world without garbage and trash? Have you ever felt lazy to put the trash in the appropriate place? Have you ever seen people throwing the trash around the bin or even on top of the lake? In this project, you will be fascinated by the idea of smart trash bin that will be a fun and engaging way of disposing the trash. When you, you can open the trash can without touching or stepping on the pedal. When you attempt to throw the trash, the lid automatically opens and after a few seconds, it closes on its own. I chose the Arduino microcontroller to build this kit. After loading the program into the processor, I fixed the circuit on a normal trash bin I fixed a cardboard lid that will open and close when the switch is on. 
This sketch senses an object within uh, within a 50 centimeter range that avoids the fear of germs when touching the lid. I wanted to build the skate efficiently at a low cost, so I used rechargeable batteries and even attempted to connect this to solar panel. My kit works successfully and can be installed in any bin to make it smart. Can you scroll down? To build an automated trash bin system that will be affordable to all classes of people, this system could be built in the existing trash bin instead of buying a new one. My goal is to implement the smart trash bin system in my house, in my home, school premises, and cafeteria. So in the first prototype, I used Arduino Uno processor, 9-volt battery, ultrasonic sensor, uh, and servo motor, and servo arm and trash bin. Can you scroll down? So here in the first, so here I have initialized the variables. So I have in also included a function for setting up the program. Also, I, I also included a function for measuring the distance of the object. So I used a formula called pulse in to, to, uh, to calculate the duration and distance. So I I using the loop function, I calculated the average distance. So if the distance is less than 50 centimeter, the servo motor's arm will, will, will turn from zero degrees to, to 150 degrees, and from 150 degrees, it turns to zero degrees. So in the program in the Arduino works such that if the sensor detects any object in a 50 centimeter range, the servo motor's arm, so the so, so, so servo motor's arm turns, uh, turns to 150 degrees and hits the upper lid of bin so that the upper lid is open, waits for one second and, and waits for a second and automatically turns to zero degrees and thus the upper lid gets closed. The Arduino is powered with a nine volt battery. In the second prototype, I used I in the second prototype I replaced nine volt battery with twelve volt rechargeable batteries since they are environment friendly and these batteries can be easily recharged. We can use it multiple times. The third prototype I used I used a solar panel to charge the to charge the twelve volt rechargeable batteries. I also added a switch to conserve the battery when the bin is not in use. I attached the trash bin to a three A solar panel. Uh, to a three a solar panel with the help of a long rod. I connected the batteries to the solar panel. Smart trash bin, a smart trash bin kept outdoors can be operated through solar panel, which is the best energy efficient method. Can you scroll down? Can you scroll down? So based on the first prototype, I infer that, that, that the nine volt battery was draining easily. In the second prototype, when, re, when rechargeable batteries were used, battery power stayed long. Also, it can be exchanged with exchanged with another set of batteries and could be recharged for further use. In the third prototype, solar panel was the best option, but charging the panel was best outdoors compared to indoors. Uh, I would like to end my presentation with an is with an Islamic text. The pro the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam always encouraged people to to keep the environment clean. Judges, would you like to question? Yes. Uh, Irshad, can you go to page number five? You it's just short page number five there. Page number five, you have written a program, right? Yes. Uh, can you show me there? Uh, this one. Next page, next page, all right. Uh, who wrote this uh, this program? Me, me, me uh, my fa me, but, but my and my father uh, helped ah. me. Right? Did you change the parameters uh, that I can see the trick pin five, echo pin six, and servo pin seven? Did you change that? 
No. No. Yes. If you change now, you should have got some more values. I will right? try in the future. Uh -huh. So you compiled this and what did you do after writing this program? After writing this program, I compiled it, I compiled it and uh, and I load it into the processor. Processor, you loaded it, it worked? It's a, I mean, I loaded it into the processor mm. and, and I connected, I connected the circuit on a normal trash bin. Okay. So you, you have uh, written only this, uh, I mean, included only servo.h library. Why didn't you include some more? Uh, because for the server motor to run, mm. it, it needs uh, because it needs library. So I also in, I, I included the server library. Yeah, Isha, it's a very good work you've done for your uh, age. You know, you've done something very good and uh, telling that uh, solar panel is very good. But you presented only three data. I would have loved to see some more changes there. Next time you try to include more data and also try to see that if you, there is a, did you know about the action of uh, uh, wrappers? If you put, you know, if the wrappers, biscuit wrapper, biscuit, okay, if that, if the wrappers you throw into the dustbin, the order will be directly placed, online order for new biscuits. Because you have emptied the biscuits, thrown the wrapper, the trash bin should understand that you have emptied the biscuits and it will order online for new biscuits. Okay. Uh, that is That will be more smart. This just is uh, a bit uh, old concept, but you try to include more parameters, Isha. Okay, I'll try in the future. Yeah, very good. Which class you are studying now? Fourth. Okay. Uh, after you have to include the compilation uh, screenshots also after you compile, what, what is the result you get after the C and C++ programs you have done? Very good. Well done. Good luck. I'm going to show you the working of the models. Can you see? Very good. Do you have any more questions? From myself, no. Ma'am? All the best, yeah. Mashallah, the best Thank you, Master yeah. Ishad Muhammad. Now we have the next candidate, MERSAO18, Mahaveen Kaleem from MS Creative School on the topic Personal Artificial Intelligence Desktop Assistance. Excuse me, can I start now? Yes. Hello? The potential benefits of artificial intelligence are huge. So are the dangers. Quoted by Dave Waters, which means that artificial intelligence can be useful to you, on the other hand, can be harmful to you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Myself, Naveen Kaleem of class 8 from MS Creative School. My topic is personal artificial intelligence desktop assistant. Introduction. Artificial intelligence is the theory and development of computer systems able to perform tasks normally requiring human intelligence, such as visual precipitation, speech recognition, task execution, decision making, and translation to three languages. And an assistant is a person who is subordinate to another person in rank, etc. So I created my project in Blue as my project, and I created a personal virtual speech recognition assistant Blue, which takes my command input and gives me the output as a task. Selection of the problem. Why did I select this problem? I selected this problem because I love learning new things about my laptop. So I started learning Python. In Python, to get in more deeper in Python, I had to do some projects up there. I saw that we all have a phone, obviously. So a 
Android phone has Google Assistant, a iPhone has Siri with it, but even a speaker has Alexa. I wanted to create one with my own bill in my own desktop. That's why I started Blue. Hypothesis. I think that this project certainly will require much of my storage. The code would be command, uh, compound, and the command would be complex to write. Materials required. A laptop, a VS code. VS code is enough. You just have to download it in any browser and some storage. What I did was go to my VS code. This is the command I'm writing here. So after going to my VS code, the first thing is that a voice assistant is nothing without its voice. So my first command was to give it voice. So the, I imported PYTDSX3 as a Sappy 5, which is a command, and I gave it the input so that whenever it I it gives me the output as its voice. And the Sappy 5, I gave it as a girl's voice. And the next thing that I gave it to this was Vishmi command, because whenever I start the code, I wanted it to greet me alongside the time. Like when it's morning, I want it to greet me good morning. When it's afternoon, I wanted it to be good afternoon, or maybe even <laughs> Yeah. 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 something it has to make it as my input so take command was my input then i wanted it then i gave it the logic building which is the main command over here first here you can see i gave it the wish me whenever the main command is started it will wish me alongside the time then the while true loop which is an infinite loop then it will start everything which i've given here the logic building over here whenever i say something like hi blue so it will take that in any sentence whenever i say hi blue it will take it as a command and give me whatever the code i have written in it let me give you an example Blue at your service, miss. Glad you called me. How can I help you, ma'am? Uh, tell me a joke, Blue. Software developers like to solve problems. If there are no problems handily available, they will create their own. Stop listening now. Stop listening now. Blue will snooze now. Call me whenever you want. As you can see, when I said hi blue, it took my command and gave me the speak command I gave it to it. Like glad you called me, etc. Then I asked it to tell me a joke. So it gave me the joke. Software developers like to solve problems. If there are no problems handily available, they will create their own. Now, do not force me to say that if it's its own joke. From the module by the side, I gave it to it. And then I said, stop listening now, it's stop listening. That is what importing. Importing, I also imported many modules in my project. You can see some of them here and some in the board below. Blue will snooze now. Call me whenever you want. Now, some of my research questions were, if it is an AI base, will it be compound? Second, how many errors would I face? Third, will Python be enough to finish it? Fourth, can this assistant tell me the time if I asked it? Fifth, how much storage will it require? Results, the results were that Blue can take my command and give me the output as a task. I'll show you another demo here. Hi, Blue. Hi, Blue. Blue at your service, miss. Glad you called me. How can I help you, ma'am? Open command prompt for me. Your wish, my command. Ah, oh, close command prompt now. Close command prompt now, Blue. Okay, ma'am. Closing command prompt. Uh, open command prompt again. Your wish, my command. Open Google. Opening Google, ma'am. Close command prompt now. Close command prompt now, Google, or blue. 
Okay, ma'am. Closing command prompt. As you can see, I asked it to open Google. It opened Google for me. You can stop listening now, Blue. Blue will snooze now. Call me whenever you want. Conclusion. After getting the results of my project, I can conclude that it, it was not complex at all to write this project. Second, there were many errors I had to face with, but I was easily able to cope up with it. Third, yes, Python was all it took to complete this whole project. Fourth, indeed, it was able to tell the time whenever I asked it. Fifth, it didn't require much storage. The Python file itself was just enough. My hypothesis was that, that it will require much of my storage, it will be compound, and I, will, I wouldn't be able to easily write the code because it will be complex. But it was nothing like that. I can say that my hypothesis was wrong because it was easy to write, it didn't take much of my time, neither my storage, and the code was not complex to write. Let me give you a brief demo now. Hi, Blue. Blue at your service, miss. Glad you called me. How can I help you, ma'am? What is the battery now? Ma'am, the system has 100% battery. Mm, what is the IP address of mine? Your IP address is 122.173.207.248. Um, who created you? Who created you? So I think it has stopped. Stopped. Yeah, so I, I want to see any data that you have. Um, the data is here in my laptop, actually. This is the code. Actually, the Python was enough to write it all in it. Okay, uh, I have a few questions there. Uh, yes, what is the speaker you have chosen? Um, the speaker I've chosen is this one. Actually, any speaker can you, you can use. Hmm. Is it you have to give in the command of this uh, speaker. So, like this is the command. You have to press three is the importing of here. So uh, you wrote you wrote this uh, blue right or what? I think you wrote the you use the word Alexa at the beginning. Um, many of it, I guess, I think that most of the commands were related to it. But I wanted to try it myself. To, that is it possible to make it by myself in just a laptop in Python? So, uh, what is the originality in this and novelty in this? These are the two things I would like to know. Originality in this thing that I gave up most of the commands using my own thinking, like a thank you command or the how are you command or the switch window command or like. Um, Python or what? Python or C, which is which you have chosen? Um, the latest version of the Python 9.6. No, no, which, which program you? Used to compile this. Um, this program means uh, it is in VS Code. I used I downloaded Python and did it so. Three point nine version was of the Python. Which one? Three point nine version of Python. Ah right okay. So what is new there? Uh, I think I have got uh, three speakers there. There isn't to my same commands like Alexa, Google Home, and Siri, and even sometimes Cortana also. Yes, sir. Uh, I think your response time was uh, very slow that uh, you can even uh, do it with your hands very faster than what you can use. Your voice. So the purpose of voice command should be it must be faster than. Actually, sir, it is because, sir, um, usually when I'm doing one stuff, I can't focus on the other stuff. So I could say to do while I'm doing the other stuff, it can do the other stuff and I say it. Like, um, I can say that it's just, it is a bit slow because of, of the mic input. My mic ain't working right now, but still, it is a bit faster when the network is good or maybe the mic will be good. 
So you have that graph at home, at workplace, etc. But I would like to know in terms of the times, response time, microseconds, and even the distance. How far can you go away from your smart speaker? Yes, sir. How far can you go away from your smart speaker so that still it is able to listen? Um, speaker. It depends on how you gave the code. I gave it just here, see. So you you didn't include that data, right? Two meters, three meters, or whatever. I just give it voices actually actually as one. Here it is in my take command. Here I gave it the threshold only one sir. Now I didn't give it any else threshold. So whenever I gave the thresholds, sir, it will give me however far I can say it. It will just do it. I just wanted to remove the background noises from my mind. That's why I gave it that much limit. Yeah. Okay. How can you say that you have done something new according to your own words? I can say that um, I created this whole project by myself, requiring only YouTube and that uh, um, all the commands, Wikipedia's and all, I gave it myself. And I wanted it to like whatever I say by myself coming into my mind, that should come into this. And all these conversations between me and this blue was all I wrote by myself. Like, thank you, it'll speak here. Most welcome, ma'am. Or how are you? I'm fine. Thank you, ma'am. How are you? I'm fine. That, well, that is good to hear. That was lame. Oh, sorry, ma'am. I'll try better next time, etc. Yeah, you have got two groups, two graphs there on the chart, you know. What is the two graphs there? You see that? Um, I, I, those two graphs are like how people are using um, voice assistants nowadays, how they, how voice assistants are useful. Yeah, it's very good work, but remember that to be labeled as artificial intelligence, you'll require a lot of data, a lot of input. Exactly. So you should be, you should be showing more of our response time and uh, the distance covered and the circuits you have included. Okay, that data, you know, it can be novel, it can be related to some specific things. So that is the competition that is going on between Google Home and Alexa, if you ask me. Google Home is able to understand Indian English and English better than Alexa can. So that's a, the, for that, uh, they have rehearsed about thousands of such words. So to label it precisely as, as artificial intelligence, you need to give more data. But anyway, you have written the program and it's something very good and you have used uh, some other speaker probably uh, from some commercial small speakers. So remember, try to remember more data, more tables, more graphs, and uh, then uh, a very good conclusion can be arrived at. Okay, good luck. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Sir. Our next candidate is MERS AO19, G Anish Babu from Fatima CS School on automated car driving, RoboCar. Good morning, everyone. I'm Anish Babu. Now I'm going to explain about my project, which is self-driving car. Abstract in this project, a simple self-driving car is designed and implemented. The concept of the project was inspired by the recent surge in automated car industry. The design car was capable of detecting the road signals and taking the right turn accordingly. To implement the whole system, the body of the car was connected to the analyzer computer via Wi-Fi, where the computer can analyze the feed video frame by frame. In a real car, the analyzer computer can be simply mounted on board. The whole system was capable of taking right decisions with excellent accuracy. Hypothesis. I think Tesla sort of more uses sensors to sense the vehicles or animals to not hit them, they are programmed to not hit them and to slow down the speed. Tesla startup will more uses an algorithm called Neural Net Planner. This algorithm sends commands to stop to move the race speed. Anish this Babu, yes. you, are, you are very fast. I think you can directly go to the result because uh, by just reading, you know, it's uh, you know very fast and I'm not able to understand. Okay, sir. Okay. You, you can directly go to the table and explain what you have, the data there, what is new and what you think is new, right? Okay, sir. Explain to me the data. So, Close startup implementation. Getting data from camera, sending data to image processor via TCP server, recognizing data from database by image processing, sending proper instructions to prototype vehicle via TCP server, executing the instruction received via TCP server. 
right any table you have no sir ah. so what is a new thing there because uh, driverless cars are already there yes sir uh, what is a new thing you have achieved then sir now only few companies are trying to uh, build a driverless cars so only tesla and bmw like that companies started uh, releasing self driving cars sir. so i'm trying to do uh, self driving car so how much data you have how much data you have in your hand now sir uh, um, i don't have any required conference uh, only the audino box and chassis of a toy car and mother uh, motor driver uh, uh, had sir other necessary components are not available in my area sir mm-hmm. so any demonstration you have no sir this is not a working model sir okay because the other necessary parts are not available in my area sir so this is on Okay, Arduino board is you know it is everywhere, and I, th- I wanted something more creative and more now. Okay. Anyway, good work and. Uh, sir, I have the source code of also sir. Okay, why why what what language you have taken? C plus plus sir. C plus plus. Okay, show me that. Uh, okay. So again, the same thing is there constant. Okay. What are the libraries you have included? I have verified it, sir. It's a working program, sir. You compiled it? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Next page. Okay. Okay. Right, Anish. Okay, sir. Try to have more data. Okay, okay. sir. Because numbers and graphs speak more than what you speak. Okay, sir. Right. Okay. Good luck. Okay. Thank you, sir. next we have jers a 001 a mohammad ashfaq from sana model school on blind advantages traffic signaling system we have mohammad ashfaq from sana model school yes ma'am i am audible yeah ashfaq ashfaq assalam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh i can directly go to your results and data because i already seen this and uh, i think the other projects are coming you can directly go to your result data uh, graphs and demo whatever you have without the introduction Okay, sir. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The science of today is the technology of tomorrow. Myself, Mama Ishfaq of grade 9, is here to present on a life-saving project, Blind Advantages Traffic Signal System. To make this project, there are three circuit, circuits required. Traffic Signal Circuit, Signal Banking Stick Circuit, and Motion Directing Locket Circuit. This, uh, traffic signal, uh, in, in the Traffic Signal, we have an RF transmitter, which has four points. A uh, point A point B point C and point D. Button A is connected with the red light, and button B is connected with the yellow light, and button C is connected with the green light. Moving on to the next circuit, we have the tra- uh, signal tracking stick circuit. This is the signal tracking stick. In this circuit, we are using an RF receiver which will uh, receive the transmitted signal from the RF transmitter. It is uh, the NVO one is connected with the buzzer, and the NVO two is connected with the vibrator. Moving on to the next circuit, we have the ultrasonic sensor circuit. In this, a question arises: uh, Why should we use an ultrasonic sensor? What about other sensors like uh, uh, PAR sensor and microwave sensors? An ultrasonic sensor will detect the uh, will detect any object in front of it and alert. Whereas the microwave sensor and a PAR sensor will only detect a human motion or a living things, as it detects the temperature of the body. That's why we are using an ultrasonic sensor. In this circuit. Uh, the ultrasonic sensors strip pin and eco pin is connected with D12 and D11 respectively 
and the pulsar is connected with the D uh, eight pin of the sensor uh, of the audio nano. Yes. Uh, going on to the code of ultrasonic sensor. In this code, we are using the defined D twelve and defined uh, equal level, which means we are connecting the D twelve with the uh, D twelve with the uh, trick and D eleven with the echo. And here we have a return of code uh, by which we can vary the distances and the frequency of the pulsar. We have written the code such that if the distance is between 200 centimeter and 100 centimeter, the blind man will receive a constant signal for 0.5 seconds, uh, uh, and will, uh, he will not receive the signal per second. And whereas if the distance be, is between 100 centimeter and 50 centimeter, the blind man will receive a signal for two, uh, 1.5 seconds, and he won't receive the signal for 0.5 seconds. And if the distance is between uh, below 50 centimeter. We will constantly keep on seeing the signal. Now moving on to the prototype. This is the traffic signal. Now, when there is a red light, right? And there's a red light, the blind man won't receive any signal. And when there is a yellow light, the blind man will receive a vibrator. It, uh, it's not audible, sir, uh, but uh, vibration is taking place there. And when there's a green signal, the blind man will receive a buzzer sound. And this is the object rating locket. And this first get on the switch. It will not detect, uh, uh, it will start detecting as it go closer. The frequency of its detection will increase as it go more closer. When it get more closer, it will keep on sounding. By this, the blind man can know how far an object is or whether there's an object in front of him. Now, moving on to the data analysis. First, uh, after testing the prototype, I started uh, uh, doing the research on it. First, I took the transmitter and the receiver with a distance of uh, 40 feet, which worked with the input battery of the inter transmitter about six volt. And when I gave nine volt input to the transmitter, I got the range about 80 feet. And when I gave the 12 volt input to the transmitter, I got the maximum range of 100 feet. And then uh, using the, uh, in the ultrasonic sensor, first in the code, uh, I kept the minimum distance of 100 centimeter, which was very a short, very short distance and could be sensed. And uh, I kept the, I changed the distance to 200 centimeter. It was an average and a very good distance. And when I changed to 300 centimeter, I detected unwanted things. So I concluded with 200 centimeter. Now, here, other question arises. Why should we use only RF transmitter? What about other transmission like Bluetooth and Wi-Fi? The only reason is that because of their range. The RF transmitter has a maximum range about 500 feet, uh, and the Wi-Fi transmitter has a maximum range of 60 to 90 feet, and the Bluetooth has a maximum range of 30 feet. Uh, results. Yeah. After testing the prototype, I obtained the following results. Blind pedestrians can cross the road safely and independently by using the signal tracking stick. And they can move independently without bumping on anything using the observating locket. Uh, when they, when, they, when there's a red light, they won't get any alert, which means they have to move. And when there's a yellow light, they get a vibration alert, which means they have to be ready. And when there is a great green light, they will receive a buzzer sound, which means they have to stop. And uh, in the uh, uh, observating locket, when the distance is between 100 to 200 centimeter, they will receive a faster sound. And when there is a uh, distance between 50 centimeter to 100 centimeter, they will receive a slow but a long sound. And when the, uh, the distance is uh, below 50 centimeter, they will receive a constant sound. Coming on to the conclusion, blind advantage traffic signaling system has, uh, is working out like expected. Both the signal tracking stick and the observatory blockade will alert the blind person uh, when they have to stop. Uh, we, uh, the system in this uh, project can be applied in the real-life traffic signaling system. 
uh, to enhance the life of blind people because they too deserve to live a normal, easy, and independent life. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Any questions, sir? Yeah, you have some very good data there. Thank you, sir. But uh, how do you think that you have done something new, something more creative, something more efficient? Can you answer any one of these three? Sir, the, this idea is totally new because I don't see anywhere the system of uh, traffic signal system where, which helps blind people to travel themselves, uh, to cross the road themselves. Uh, this is an a prototype which helps them uh, to cross the road themselves. And uh, uh, it is more efficient because uh, the blind people uh, could be independent themselves and uh, they could uh, travel themselves. Uh, it will help them in, uh, it, will help, it will alert them when they have to stop and uh, it will make them uh, independent. Okay, sure. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Ashfaq. Next, we have JE. Next, we have JERS A009 A Nizaruddin from Fatima CSA School on EcoBot Build Operate Transfer. Good morning, Don Andal Presentia. I am Nizaruddin of Class 10, studying in Fatima Central Senior Secondary School. The title of my project is EcoBot Quick Expansion of Bodies Build, Operate, and Transfer. The main objective of my project is to stop the deforestation and conserve the forest and wildlife to protect the biodiversity using robotics. So the reason behind I choose this project is to stop the deforestation because forests are the lungs of the earth. This is the project which would save the ecological balance by protecting the trees from getting deforestated. The materials required are sound, sen sound sensor, security camera, GSM module, Arduino, and mobile phone as a receiver, jumper cables, and battery. At first, we have to connect the at first we have to connect the GSM to Arduino and to Arduino and with using jumper cables and sensor using jumper cables. We have to give power supply to the Arduino using 9 volt battery. We have to write and execute the coding for Arduino and sensor connectivity for sending the message while our tree is cutting down. Embed the coding with Arduino. We have to place the connected bot on the top of the tree. If any new on the top of the tree, and we have to place the cameras around the tree. If when a new intruder illegally is coming into the forest and he is cutting the tree, the sound sensor will sound sense it in the decibels. If the particular decibels reach the machine produce sound, it decibel is 80. So if the particular decibels reach, then it would send send a signal to Arduino. Arduino will process the signal and send the signal to the GSM. From the GSM, there will be a sim. From the sim directly, you can get a in a mobile phone, you can get a message that in a particular location, this tree has been cut down and video footage also will be available in your phone. So we can see who is cutting the forest illegally and who is cutting the trees and who is, go who is making deforestation. We can easily find them and catch them and we can put them into the jail. Conclusion of my project is, my hypothesis will be success if the government is ready to allot funds for conserving the forest and wildlife to protect the biodiversity. Oh, Nizaruddin. Yes, sir. What is the work you have done here? Can you show me in numbers and graphs? I have, I have connected Arduino with the sound sensor. So if sound it receives and it will it will sense it and send the signal to Arduino. From the Arduino, it the it will come to GSM. From the GSM, you can receive a message in your mobile phone. Sir. And a bus sound. That will uh, both, that, of, that both will of them, that. both of these are available already and have been incorporated in many models. When talking about applied science, you are uh, supposed to show something more new and uh, some challenges that you have faced and that which you have solved. What is that that uh, and that is new here? I have done coding also for that, sir. To make coding. Yes, sir. C plus sir. In which in which language you did the coding? C plus plus sir. C plus plus. I think yes, uh, 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 you you should have a separate uh, uh, data table for that. Have you changed the parameters? 
Uh, then what is your conclusion there so my hypothesis will be success if the government allot fund for conserving the forest so if the government allot uh, funds we can we can make many wars and we can keep in the reserve reserved forest so no one can enter and cut the tree illegally if deforestation is going on it increases in the global warming increases in greenhouse gas emission soil erosion plus wildlife extension and habitat loss and make the seas acidic so when we create when we stop the deforestation we can avoid these disadvantages sir what if i say security cameras are more efficient than this one sir security cameras you know the optical cameras that we have directly observing they are more efficient sir, but than you cannot sir, but you cannot uh, see when when the person is cutting the message will not come to your phone sir mm-hmm. okay but, so in my project the message will come in a particular location where the which particular tree has been cut down sir okay so you can receive a message and you can so, catch them and put into jail sir this is for a government based project it's only on paper so nothing has been done any experiment you have done there sir that's all have you tested yes, that have you tested that no sir for testing i have to cut the tree sir i have not tested And at least, uh, I mean, is it is it working? Yes, sir. If it is working. You okay. can use small some models. You know, you did not have to cut trees. You could have done some uh, artificial, uh, what say, sticks and artificial things, and then cut them and noted down the data. What is the range? How much distance it can with it can it can sense? Sir, uh, when the machine produces eighty to ninety decibels, sir. So in that range, I will I will send the sir. If eight uh, decibels comes, that will go. that uh, you should put right. You cannot just say you have to write the table. How much decibel it sends? How much distance? How much uh, time it takes? Eight to ninety decibels, sir. Yeah, that you have to include in the data, right? Okay, so sir. So good thing and okay, uh, continue in this project. It's a very good work, and you you try to update you, this sir. and keep in touch with this. Yes, Don't sir. stop it here. Okay. Okay. okay good. Sir, I'll. I'll i'll do sir in future i'll plant this in more trees sir i'll keep this in more trees uh, always have some data the data and graphs okay sir next they time speak, already data sir oh uh, yeah they speak more than what you have in your mind right okay okay, okay sir okay, thank you sir thank you nizaruddin next we have j e r s a 010 Muhammad Umar from Sana Model School on Smart Village System. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am Muhammad Umar study 9C at Sana Model School. Uh, today I am going to explain about my project the Smart Village System. So in this project we have created a sensor which is which is going to help the farmers to fa- where they are facing many issues while they are farming for example they have no proper security systems for their land uh, if they sleep sleep at the night they will be worrying if any animals or trespasser came to their farm and damage the crops to avoid this we have created a sense arduino project which can be installed at the four corners of the farm uh, which would help the farmers to work on the yielding now let's see what are the materials needed uh, to what are the materials needed to uh, do the sensor now the materials needed are an arduino uno board a ultrasonic sensor a sd90 servo motor a breadboard some jumper wires and a buzzer now the main component here is the ultrasonic sensor and the sd motor servo motor the ultrasonic sensor is used which is which can detect the uh, animals which is passing by the sensor and can alert the farmer by turning on the buzzer which is installed near by the sensor 
Now the servo motor which is a tiny and a lightweight motor with high output power. Servo can rotate approximately 180 degrees 90 in each direction and works just like the standards, standard kinds but smaller. You can use any servo code, hardware or library to control these servos. Now, uh, the, this project can be worked by if any uh, animals or trespassers is passing by, it can uh, alert the sensor. Um, they can alert, uh, turn on the sen uh, buzzer which is installed nearby the sensor so that the farmers can be alerted uh, and they can draw the animal away. So this was the this is my project, the smart village system, uh, which will help the farmers to work on the yielding and it will may, it will satisfy the criteria of a safe and secure village system for the farmers. Yeah, good Omar. Uh, you have any testing? You have done any testing on this? You have tested this on any village, any place, any locality? I have not tested in any village, but I have tested here in my home and I obtained the following results because uh, when something which is uh, the ultrasonic sensors uh, maximum range is a thousand centimeters which is approximately 10 meters so if anything it is uh, uh, going uh, inside the range limit uh, it can de uh, it can detect and uh, turn on the buzzer which is installed See, that's for a smart there are a lot of smart things you know you have to prove it by means by using data or, uh, or information. Do you have any information of the data there? No, sir. Okay. Okay, Amar. Thank you, sir. Ahmad Umar. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You've been asked something. Uh, Umar is over. I can go on okay. to. Okay, sir. We have the last candidate. That is. SERSA006, Nafisa Sharon AW from Fatima CSS School on mathematical approach to electrical circuit using Kramer's rule. Hello everyone, my name is Nafisa Sharon. I'm from Fatima Central Senior Secondary School, so I'm studying in class 12. And my topic is mathematical approach to electrical circuit using Kramer's rule. My abstract is that in this project, mathematical calculation of electric circuit would be analyzed using Kirchhoff's law and mass inspection method using Kramer's rule. My hypothesis is the Kirchhoff's law is much complicated when it comes to solving circuits. So I have found a new way to solve the circuit and find loop current that is mass inspection method using Kramer's rule. My procedure has two methods that is one is Kirchhoff's law and the other one is mass inspection method using Kramer's rule and we have a circuit in that we have three loops and then we have uh, we consider the loop current to be in the clockwise and then um, from that we get the three equations and by eliminating and comparing those three equations we get I1, I2 and I3 that is the loop current of these loops and uh, from mass inspection method, we don't have to do any of this and we just have to compare the resistance of these loops and then form a, form a matrix and from that we get the value of I1, I2 and I3 that is loop current. So my result is that uh, even when we are using both methods, we get the same value and that it is uh, very easy when we use mass inspection method using Kramer's load. And my conclusion is my hypothesis was 100% correct and that using Kramer's method using mass inspection method using Kramer's rule would be much easier. Thank you. Any question? How do you relate uh, this uh, Kramer's rule with Kirchhoff? That is, uh, uh, in this Kirchhoff's law, we get the uh, directions and like from this junction, we have, uh, we should consider the direction. But in a mass inspection method, we don't have to 
consider any directions. We just have to form the matrix and uh, solve the, the solve the equation. Is this your worked out problems? Yes, sir. I worked out these uh, equations. Can you explain that a bit? First, I'm considering the loop uh, A, B, G, H, A. In that, uh, we have to find the loop current I1. And we have uh, equations that is, uh, for this, we have two resistors. And then we uh, we have uh, we have the formula V is equal to I R. So uh, we have to find uh, I, I here. So we uh, get the resistance and the voltage. And then we form this uh, equation. Yeah, what do you say when you say that, you know, Kramer's rule is not very efficient in solving many determinants? Is it is it applicable to all, I mean, all types of uh, problems? No, sir. It is only applicable in a planar uh, circuit. Planar? Planar circuit, sir. Planar circuits, okay. So, what do you want to uh, conclude? I conclude that uh, using these uh, would be much easier and then it would consume time. Uh, when we use the kids of law and this would be less time consuming. Yeah, why did you choose Kramer's rule? Because it's easy, sir. Uh, here we have uh, so many uh, calculations here, but here we just find a delta value and from that we sub uh, divide the delta I1 and I2 and I3 and we get the uh, values of loop current. Can you show the equation there in the in the slide? Or, uh, one idea. Yeah, yeah, that more closer. So three by three, you used three by three matrix. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, uh, why, why did you choose only three by three, not more than that? Because there is only three loops here, sir. We uh, don't right. have more. So if you go for higher order, right? So higher order, it will be same like same efficient like what you have done here. Can you apply this to four by four? Yes, sir. We can apply. Okay, sir. Okay, good luck. Good work. Thank you, sir. With this, we come to the end of the session. I thank all the judges, the hosts, co hosts, as well as the students. Excuse me, ma'am. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. Excuse me, ma'am. Sister? Yes. Uh, I would like to thank that. Excuse me, ma'am. Um, yes. Uh, ma'am, you did not follow my name. I'm sorry. This is Jasina Firdos, ma'am. You are reporting under what category? Uh, batch five, ma'am. Uh, by batch five. Ah. Physical science or what? Uh, uh, what is your code number? Code. My uh, okay, so let me just check. Uh, I think uh, she has entered on the wrong link, sir. She is supposed uh, to N NS, enter NS batch five. It's enough. Uh, NS. NSF4, NSF22, JLSA162. Uh, well, what is the, uh, repeat the code? NSF it is JLS A162, sir. It is JLS. Yes, yeah, sir. Now you have to go to the uh, batch six. Okay, sir. Uh, you have joined differently. Now it is going on, join that. Parallelly five going. is still going on. Please join there. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Uh, sister, I would like to thank the judges. Shall I? Yes, sir. Please. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah uh, khair for the judges. Uh, particularly, Sister Shamim was very busy uh, with her work. Uh, in spite of that, uh, she spared valuable time. 
as well uh, Dr. Rafi and uh, Dr. Imran. Uh, Alhamdulillah, the session was very lively and a very good interaction with the uh, uh, students, uh, their presentation and uh, very interesting questions were raised. Alhamdulillah, Jazakallah, Khair Saad, thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you, the the thank you for the opportunity, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the opportunity you had given, and especially my special thanks to Imran, sir, who uh, from whom I learned a lot today. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, valedictory, they had to attend. Ah, uh, yes, sir. All are invited to join the valediction at uh, four o'clock, inshallah. Okay, uh, sister, we can end the session. Thank you, everyone. Here, I end the session here. Salim, sir, you can end. Okay. Aisha, ma'am, any instruction you want to give? No, sir. Thank you. Uh, oh, for valid directory also. I'm sorry, sir. Uh, for valid directory also, Salma, madam, told her. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He told, she told me. Uh, you prepared for that one. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. I'm prepared. You are comparing. Yes, sir.